In the name of God, the gracious, the merciful, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today I would like to talk about the concept of riba according to the Quran. In Surah 2 verse 275, it says, Those who consume riba do not rise except as one being influenced by the devil. That is because they have said bear is the same as riba, while God has made bear lawful and he has made riba unlawful. Now we know in traditional Islam, riba is understood as interest rate. If you take a loan and there's an interest rate applied to it, no matter what uh, the percentage of that interest rate is, it is considered riba in traditional Islam. So we're going to verify whether this is accurate according to the Quran or not. And we're also going to examine what the word bear is. Because as we can see, it says here, bear is the same as riba. While God has made bear lawful and he has made riba unlawful. So if in order for us to understand riba appropriately, we also must understand what bear is. So let's begin by defining the term riba. Riba comes from the root ra ba and it means growth. ra ba specifically means adding growth to a pre-existing thing. And the Quran confirms this, like in Surah 22, verse 5. And you see the land still, but when we send down the water to it, it vibrates and rabat grows. So the land was already pre-existing, and then you add water to it, and it rabat, it grows. Likewise, in Surah 17, verse 24, And lower for them the wing of humility through mercy, and say, My Lord, have mercy upon them, as they have rabbayani, they have raised me when I was young. So riba and rabwa and any form of this root simply means adding growth to a pre-existing thing. So as we have seen, riba means growth. Now we need to understand what bear means. As noted earlier, Surah 2 verse 275 seems to indicate that bear is the opposite of riba. Bear is lawful, whereas riba, growth, is unlawful. So the word bear simply means commerce. More specifically, it comes from the root ba ya a, which means a mutual transaction between two parties. It's a mutual transaction, a willing transaction between two parties. Now think about this for a second. Bear, again, a commerce, when you have a mutual transaction, it means that if a person is selling something and you are willing to pay X amount for it, this, this becomes a mutual transaction between the two. It's a bear. And this is important to understand because if I am selling something and I want to profit from that, even if I'm adding an interest rate to it, this is still profiting. It's, a, it's considered a bear as long as it's a mutual transaction between the two. And this is why Several verses after Surah 2 verse 275, which is Surah 2 verse 282, the longest verse in the Quran that talks about borrowing and lending money comes immediately after the topic of riba. So let's read what God says here. O you who believe, if you borrow for a future period, then you shall record it, and let a scribe of justice record it for you. And let not the scribe refuse to record as God has taught him, and have evidence when you tabayatum both commerce and beware of God. Tabayatum simply indicates, which is the same root as bear, indicates that there is a mutual transaction between the two parties. If you borrow and you write down all the terms and the conditions and you agree to this term and condition, whether there is profiting in the in the loan or not if you agree to it then it is considered a bear okay it is considered a form of commerce so it's important to understand bear includes profiting via interest rates so technically speaking bear as long as the transaction is mutual between the two parties it is considered a bear okay so what is the difference between bear and riba, between commerce and growth? 
We learned so far that commerce is a mutual transaction including profiting and interest, whereas growth means an unauthorized swelling interest of someone's monies, and this will become evident as we examine the other verses. So to briefly reiterate, we have examined the difference between bear and riba. They are two opposing spectrums. Bear, which is commerce, and it's a mutual transaction including profiting and interest rates. Again, if both parties are happy with the transaction, regardless if there is interest rate and or profiting, as long as both of them are happy, this is considered a bear or commerce. On the other hand, growth or riba is unauthorized swelling of someone's monies. And this will become evident as we examine the verses. So let's start breaking down what riba is according to the Quran. Riba involves several things. The first and perhaps the most important thing is that riba is specifically taking advantage of a poor person's loan constraints. And I invite everybody to do this. Open up the Quran, look up the topic of riba, okay, and, and read it in context, in a specific passage. All the verses that talk about riba all revolve around the treatment of poor or less fortunate people. And I'm going to give you a couple examples here. Surah 2, verse 273, for the poor who face the hardship in the cause of God, they cannot go forth in the land. The ignorant ones think they are rich from their modesty. You know them by their features. They do not ask the people repeatedly. So God here is talking about the condition, the situation condition of poor people. Then he says, those who consume growth, riba, do not rise except as one being influenced by the touch of the devil. So it is evident that there's a strong association uh, and perhaps the only association of riba is treatments with the poor or less fortunate people. Another example, Surah 30, verse 38. So give the relative his due and the poor and the wayfarer. That is the best for those who seek the face of God, and they are the successful ones. Again, God here is talking about treatment of poor and less fortunate people. Then he says, and any growth you have taken to grow from the money of the people, it will not grow with God. God is talking about a specific type of swelling of the money specifically from the poor, less fortunate people. Okay, so that's a very important concept to understand. Even biblically speaking, uh, what is called usury, okay, which is the high amounts of interest rates, the growth, that's the riba, it is specifically taking advantage of a poor person's financial loan constraints. There's another two points I'd like to show here. Riba involves the sin is upon the consumer of riba. Okay, many people get this confused. It is the consumer of the riba that is obtaining the sin, not the one who is paying the riba or giving the riba. Also, within the same verse, un, God says that riba involves unfair consumption of growth money. Surah 4, verse 161. And for their taking of growth, riba, while they were prohibited from doing so, and for their consuming the money of the people unjustly. So God here is tying both concepts for us. Taking growth, again, that's the consumption of riba, and for consuming the money for the people unjustly. So you are taking unfair, unauthorized growth of money from the people. Again, that is the difference between bear and growth. Growth is the unauthorized or unjust taking of money, and it's specifically taking advantage of a poor person's financial situation. One last point, the growth riba amount is multiplied over and over. Surah 30 verse 130. O you believe, do not consume riba growth compounding over and over. So again, this indicates for us that riba is not just any interest rate. It's not an interest rate at all. It's specifically taking advantage of a poor person's financial constraints. And it is uh, an unfair consumption of growth money. 
and uh, it, the, the actual amount, the growth itself, is a multiplication. It's multiplied over and over. Again, taking advantage of the poor person's financial situation, keeping them in debt practically forever. So in the next slide, I'm going to give you a visual presentation uh, to show you what is the difference between bear and growth. And uh, hopefully that will be even more clear for us. To conclude, commerce or bear is a mutual transaction or loan between parties. This includes profits and interest rates. Say you have two happy parties. One will give a loan to the other. The other is required to pay it back with some change, with some interest rate. As long as both parties have agreed to pay this back in this manner, in this situation, it's a mutual transaction, then it is perfectly okay. It is lawful. It is bare between the two parties. On the other hand, riba or growth is taking a compounded and unfair interest rate to a loan it takes advantage of the less fortunate it keeps them in debt as we have seen from the quran so say you have the devil and an unhappy person the devil gives a loan to this unhappy person and this unhappy person is required to pay it back with a compounded compounded growth a compounded compounded interest rate it is basically keeping this unhappy person in debt forever. Say, for example, this poor person doesn't have any money. He borrows money from the devil. And then the poor person says, hey, I cannot, I cannot pay you back on time. Can you give me more time? The devil will say, sure, I'll give you more time, but I'm going to have to charge you an extra interest rate. And that cycle continues, leaving this poor person in debt forever. And so that is a difference between riba and bear. And remember, this is the Quranic riba. Some people have asked me, uh, is it okay to buy a house or a car under a loan? And at least in the United States, they make sure that they run through the appropriate channels to ensure that you can afford to buy under a loan a house or a car plus the interest rate. They check for your credit, they check that you have a job, they check the income that you have, they make sure that you have the appropriate money to pay back the, the principal plus the interest rate. And as long as both of you are satisfied with the agreed upon transaction, then this is considered a bear. And as I already noted and gave you an example, the riba is a different spectrum taking advantage of the less fortunate and keeping them in debt. Wassalamu alaikum.